What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Solar System, where we help you understand the system your soul goes into. This is Moon Dez Michael. I'm your host, World Triangle Michael, and I am cutting out the esoteric middleman and giving you the tools you need to connect yourself right to the source. Welcome back to the series known as, uh, actually, I don't even remember what this playlist was called. Anyway, the series where we're talking about reality and dimensions, where we're breaking down reality, dimensions, and everything and anything that we can experience. So, welcome back to the series. Now, this one is going to be kind of important because we're going to break down the states of heaven, hell, and purgatory at the same time giving you the understanding so that you can know that this is not just some religious bullshit idea that is used to scare you into being a good little Catholic boy or Jewish or Islamic or whatever the heck. But yeah, so we're breaking down reality dimensions. This episode we're talking about heaven, hell, and purgatory. So without any further ado, I guess we should probably hop into breaking this stuff down. So, the biggest thing you guys need to note is that heaven, hell, and purgatory are not places that you go. Alright, now like I just said, heaven, hell, and purgatory are not places that you go to experience. They are states of being, right? Now, we've broken down the uh, dimensions, right? 1, 2, and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? However, I left out a certain part about those videos where the first, second, third dimension, the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension, and the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension can be correlated to heaven, purgatory, and hell. The first, second, third dimension being hell, which is you know what we're experiencing now, the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension being purgatory, and the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension being heaven. Now I know that I have just contradicted myself from what I said earlier about how these aren't necessarily places that you go, rather states of being, but we're going to talk about why I explain it the way that I do in a moment. But first things first, let's talk about this as states of being. So heaven, hell, and purgatory are all states of being that we will all experience throughout some point in our lives, right? For the most part, most people experience a hell or slash purgatory state. And, you know, the ultimate goal eventually is to reach that heaven-like state where you can consciously experience what you want. And you go out and move around in this world, understanding your surroundings, understanding the influence that you give off, understanding what kind of light you're receiving, and then, you know, moving out through those experiences. All while doing that, you are experiencing what you want and setting yourself up to continue to experience what you want. That's a heaven state here on Earth. And before we actually hop into talking about how the first, second, third dimensions like hell and the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions like purgatory and seven, eight, nines like heaven, what we're going to do is we are going to first, obviously, explain what heaven, purgatory, and hell is. Let's break it down, right? We're going to start with hell. Hell, most people think of as a place of eternal torment, fire, brimstone, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, Whatever, right? That's not necessarily the case. Like I said earlier, heaven, hell, and purgatory are not places to go, rather states of experiences. So with that being said, hell is a state of torment, but not in the way that you think. All hell is is a routine pattern, structure system, or some kind of emotional state or experience that you are trapped in, and you cannot get out of. And not only are you trapped in and cannot get out of it, you are constantly reliving this, but it's also not a pleasant experience. That's the important thing when you're looking at whether or not you're in hell. If it's not pleasurable to you and you're stuck in that experience, what kind of experience do you think it's going to be, right? Hell. You're in a hell. And the only way to get out of it is to break that structure system or routine that you're in. But you also have to understand why you're in it. How did I get into this mess? Why am I in this mess? What can I learn? Nothing? Okay, I'm out. You have to obviously know why you got into that situation and see if there's any meaning you can extract from it. And once you have checked those two boxes, get the hell out of it because there's no reason for you to be in it anymore. So what is purgatory? Well, it's the in-between state of heaven and hell, right? You're not exactly stuck in a routine or pattern or situation that you can't get out of, but you're not exactly consciously experiencing what you want. So yeah, purgatory is the middle state. You're not necessarily in hell, you're not in some routine or structure system that you can't quite escape. You're still, you know, kind of trapped in some sort of in-between. I'm not really stuck in something. I have options, but I'm not really doing what I want to yet. But on the other hand, you haven't quite exactly started to just consciously experience what you want. So that's purgatory. Now for the heaven state, and obviously as you can tell from what I've been talking about this entire time, heaven is the state of being where you consciously experience what you want, and your structure system you want, you're constantly building new things, relating, whatever you wish to relate, it's you're doing whatever you want, and you're not stuck in a system or routine where everything kind of feels forced, or there's a lot of pressure on you, or anything that would be remotely similar to 
uh, a hell or purgatory like state of being. Now here's where the contradiction comes in, as you can tell by the little camera flip, which hand is gonna snap this one. Each of the states, heaven, hell, and purgatory can be attributed to dimensional realities. So the first, second, third dimension is like hell, the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension is like purgatory, and the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension is like heaven. You just contradicted yourself, but how is it not a contradiction? It's still a contradiction. You know, what's going on here? Let me explain. So, I'm not exactly trying to say that the first, second, third dimension, and the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension, and the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension are heaven, purgatory, and hell, respectively. Those are the sort of dimensional realities, level of experience, where it is the easiest to feel like you're in that state of being. So, it is much easier to feel heaven in the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension than it is to feel heaven in the first, second, and third dimension. And as you reach the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension, feeling like you're living in a heaven becomes easier and easier and easier until you're, you know, a source at that point where the only thing you care about really is yourself and you have a bunch of beings living inside of you, right? I don't care. They're less than me. What the hell? Why, why should I care? Like, I can just go and experience whatever I want. I only got to worry about what's on my mind. I'm only in conflict with myself. None of everything else matters. They're doing their thing. I'm doing my thing. Now, obviously, you can still experience heaven in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions, but it is a lot easier to experience in the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension, which is why I say that the first, second, and third dimension and the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension are more of the hell and purgatory state, right? Think about it like this, if you remember anything about, or wait, I don't remember where the card is, because camera flippy things. So anyway, if you click on the video, wherever the heck it is of the first, second, third dimension, you will... Start to understand how this is more of like the hellscape, right? Because you are in the first dimension, you're just starting off as a spirit. In the second dimension, you're just starting to move, kind of exist inside of another being. You know, you're, it's a dualistic reality that you live in. You can think, you can feel, you start moving, putting things into motion until you start interacting with your surroundings. And then bam, you're in a human body and you get trapped into some experience you don't really want to be in. Hell, right? If you're new to the whole experience game. It's the easiest for some other spirit to rock you to sleep and put you into some kind of experience that you really don't want to be, right? But when you get into the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension, you have, oh, I am able to recognize and escape the situations that are around me and the experiences that are being forced upon me. Now I can actually start to realize how I can create my own experiences and do what I want for myself. But you're not quite at the point where you can call that a heaven, right? Because there's still other more powerful spirits that might still try to be trying to pull you down and put you in a reality or a situation and rock you to sleep where you don't want to be in. So not only are you fighting that off at the same time, but you're also working on building your system of it, creating and experiencing whatever you want. And this brings us into the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension. Basically, the dimension that you could equivalize to, or equate, equivalize, equate. To heaven, the point where you are just experiencing what you want to experience. And you know, in the seventh dimension where you're a solar system, you have a bunch of planets living inside of you and star. So you're like, oh, I'm focused on my attention. I understand thoughts and influences. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a support system for everything else. I'm experiencing what I want. This is my own little world. This is my house. You know what I'm saying? I can experience what I want. I can do what I want. But then you're still living inside of a galaxy, which is still living inside of a verse, right? So, not quite. But when we get to the point of understanding that this is a much better level than just being a star anyway, or a planet for that matter, but when we get into the 8th and ninth dimension where we're becoming galaxies and verses, this is the point where you can really say that you are now living in a heaven. Because in a galaxy and in a verse, you are the one that is building the structure system, experiencing the fruits of your labor creating systems for you to consciously experience whatever you want. And so now you can say that you have achieved a state of what most people would call heaven. Heaven, the quotes were off. It's not necessarily a place. Just because you get there doesn't mean that you're constantly going to be feeling that way. Because, let's face it, some spirits, even though they're living in the 7th, 8th, and ninth dimension, can still get lost and trapped into some kind of cycle. If they're being stupid and not paying attention and not focusing on themselves and what they want to experience, some other dickhead spirit comes around and be like, hey, smack, you're mine now, you know what I mean? Like, so it's not really a place, it's more of just a state of being. So the next time someone tries to tell you that, oh, heaven and hell are just the places that you go when you die, that's just why you gotta follow all these rules you get. No. Yeah, until next time, you know, stay lit. Yeah, go follow us on Instagram, Bazinga Solar Systems, to check out the reels and the stories. Well, we're basically giving you the daily alignments, breaking down every day's energy every day on the daily, making this too convenient for you. So just go ahead and give us a follow. Yeah, and you have it all right there, you know what I'm saying? 
And as always, if you guys want to request a reading, email us at readings at solarsystems.org, somewhere along the screen that way. But until next time, guys, fly high, y'all.